Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. With me, my good friend, special guest, Dr. Friday with Dr. Friday's tax and financial firm over in Brentwood, Tennessee. She is a tax expert for small business owners and individuals, and we're going to be talking about the new Tax Act and how it's going to affect you. Now, the Tax Act took effect last year. It's going to be, uh, there's some sunset provisions that uh, will happen in 2025. We're going to talk about that. But again, as I said before the break, some of the things we want you to understand, how the law is going to affect you, uh, how it will, whether it's going to cost you money or whether you're going to benefit from it, uh, how you can position yourself, of course, to benefit even more, something proactive here, uh, what you need to change now and in the future, and what you need to worry about, if anything. Um, as we cover the new rules, and we're talking about these questions, we're going to get into, as I mentioned, like the 20 questions, right? And uh, one of the things that we're looking to help you with is to develop an, an action plan checklist to get for to maybe to pick out some things here. So keep pencil and paper handy, pen and paper handy, be able to write down some notes on this so that when you do meet with your tax person, you've got some things you want to talk to them about and ask them about. So let's start with an overview of the new tax rules, all right? So one, this is the most far-reaching reform since 1986. It impacts nearly every person in business. Many people will see a new positive to their bottom line, and this has been my experience with clients as well, that m for the most part, most of them are saving uh, when it comes to their taxes. Uh, interpretations and revisions are going to continue as with any new tax law. Most individual changes are temporary, which are going to sunset or expire in 2025. And then business-related uh, changes, however, do not expire. It adds an estimated $1.8 trillion to the national deficit, and they're hoping to grow it out, right? Broaden the tax base. This is one of the things. If you uh, decrease unemployment, which we've seen unemployment so rates come down dramatically across all, all uh, socioeconomic uh, le uh, b um, levels, I guess, in, in saying this, so what that's doing is if you broaden the tax base and this goes back to reagan as well if you broaden the tax base if you've got more people paying in that's going to give you more revenue over time than would uh just having uh, raising taxes and having fewer people paying a higher amount right. all right and this is the this is part of the thinking behind it though lacking uh, bipartisan support un unlike previous big tax revisions they're saying this part of it is when you think of uh, that issue, is understanding the different the parties, all right, whichever uh, side of the aisle you may uh, tend to favor, the parties do tend to have some things that you tend to attribute to them. For instance, you will have uh, on the Republican side tending the tendency is to be more about smaller government and um, and less taxes. Having said that. <laughs> It's not to say they don't spend like, you know, drunken sailors themselves, all right? So right. this is, this is, this, this uh, thinking as far as whether you attribute that to them or not, or the way it gets attributed to them, uh, let's face it, our Congress has a problem, uh, uh, our politicians have a problem right. when it comes to spending that's not been stopped. Right. And the other part, and then on the Democrat side, you more about uh, social programs and things like that and how to fund those. And you know, So one is about supposedly reducing taxes, the other about raising taxes. Uh, and then it's who's going to pay the tax, and, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. obviously, like you said, both sides know how to spend the money. Neither seem to really understand the whole concept. It's sort of like they, they talked about simplifying the tax forms, right, where they were going to have us on a one-page tax form. I can honestly mm -hmm. tell you I didn't do any single-page tax forms. Um, we had one in the old, uh, well, prior, was called the 1040EZ. If you had a single W-2, yeah. nothing else, you would have had a single-page tax form. Uh, the current 1040 is on a single page, but they added five pages, one through five, that breaks down the interest and dividends, the sole purpose. It, it, it yeah. basically just added more forms than what we already had in the past. So mm -hmm. just saying their version of wanting to complete or simplify, I don't believe actually succeeded. I actually think it confused people. Instead of people getting used to looking at Schedule A, they knew that's what all their you know, depreciation, I mean their uh, mortgage interest and all that showed up on. Then it went to a Schedule 1, then it went to a Schedule A. It was just additional mm -hmm. information. So this is one of the areas. So even though the, the form looks different, your 1040 looks different yes. and supposedly is a simpler form, you know, not 
not so. we're not seeing that kind of thing really in practice. What we're mainly seeing more has to do with some of the meat of the, the act, such as uh, new higher standard deductions and that kind of thing. Right. So in fact, let's take a look at uh, four keys. Number one, many uh, beloved deductions have been eliminated. That will need your attention. And understanding a lot of people that are used to itemizing and getting these deductions, it's going to change for you. Uh, but at the same time, not necessarily does that, is that a negative. Where you live makes a difference in how the new tax rule impacts you. We've talked about Difference. property taxes, among other things, and sales tax uh, credits and that kind of stuff. A range of family tax issues on children, schooling, marriage, retirement, we want to talk, right? Estate planning have also changed. Businesses and small business owners face a range of rule changes as well. So about the loss of these many well-known, uh, this more in Tennessee, less of an effect here really uh, with regard to the, on that deduction, especially when it comes to property taxes, right? Right, property taxes. Brentwood did actually include, I noticed a lot of people, but since you're talking about, we have a higher standard deduction. I did find a lot of people did not qualify for itemizing, but Brentwood did change the sales tax to 9.75. A lot of people I noticed still had the original rate of 9.25. Um, that 0.5 doesn't make big enough difference for most people unless you were already itemizing, but yes. Uh, but they also, the whole retirement and um, children, there is some changes, like child credit went to $2,000 last year on the tax return. So there was some advantages to having children, uh, I always say 16 and under, mm -hmm. because at the age of 17, it actually falls off. Okay, so we're gonna crank through some things here to help with, but in, and with that, we'll intersperse some different tax uh, strategies. So again, pay attention to that. One is tax deductions we talked about uh, have changed on that in terms of itemizing what it really amounts to is that because of the new higher standard deduction less people will be uh, able to itemize but Still it's bad. the same, you're still getting the benefit of it. And we still have even and odd that does come into play. If you are an individual and you're not 70 and a half and able to take your charitable contributions from your required minimum distributions, I'm a huge fan of that. And Hank, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about how that exactly works. But if you're under the age or you're not hitting required minimum distributions and you give quite a bit to charity, if you can work your schedule or every other year you're giving what you normally do in a two year period, you give in one, in many cases, we're still finding those individuals itemizing because they're getting their double property tax, they're getting their double charitable contributions. Many people at the, the age of, the, you know, when they're doing that, they're not actually having a mortgage. But either way, you're still exceeding the $26,000 that people over the age of 65 have. So there is still ways of maximizing and not giving to charity just because it's not a tax deduction is not really an option for most of my clients. Right. And this is one of the areas. So we'll talk about, again, on the, the uh, even and not as, as uh, Dr. Fry was just saying, this basically, if you've got, we, we've talked in the past about taking property taxes and doubling up. So one year you pay your property taxes in essence at the end of the year, the beginning of the year. Uh, so you have it where you're, you're paying uh, double, if you will, in one year. And then there'll be a year where they don't show up. So just the way you write your checks and uh, so you can double up on your property taxes, you can double up on your charitable contributions. So if you're tithing to your church as an example, this yeah. is uh, one of the most common ones that, that I run into in my office. And what we do is we just say, well, why don't we just tithe for the next year in advance? Do it in December. Okay, so go ahead in December. We've tithed for that year. We'll tithe for the next year up front. And that way we've we've doubled up on that. So we're trying to boost up the deductions. And, let's, and typically most people are not going to benefit every year. But even if you were over the limit every year, doing it this way will get you a bigger deduction than exactly. it would otherwise. So it works for we, this odd even strategy is one of the ones we use with clients all the time. And if you got medical, if you've had a big medical year, this may be a time when we say, oh, well, let's double up on these other things exactly. as well and, and maximize the deduction you can get. With the new standard deduction at 24, it's actually 24.6, I think, this year now. Right, but if you're over the age of 65, then it's like 26.2 right. or something like that. They add, yeah, you get about 1,300, and we'll get that out. So it's about $1,300, I think, per person over age 65. And it's 26.4 now, I think, it, or 24.4, and then that would add 2,600, so that would put you at uh, about 27,000, I think, total for a standard deduction. So that's a lot uh, of, you know, uh, that you don't have to worry about. So if you can't itemize and you were before because you were up over 20 let's say well you're getting 
seeing a big benefit this way. Most taxpayers are going to see a benefit rather than a negative on that. Right. All right, so uh, seven items you should know about to deduct about the new tax rules that we were just talking about, um, in particular the deduction rules and tax rates. Number one, your tax rate likely drops by 2 to 4 percent. And what they're talking about here is the way the brackets work. So on the brackets, we've now reduced the brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they're saying 2 to 4 percent. Let me, let me clarify something here. This is one of the, Doesn't I'll take a little issue, there. right? <laughs> if, you, if you have a tax rate, if your tax bracket, rather, was 15 percent, and it was reduced down to 12 percent, Okay, technically that, and, and they're saying that's a 3% reduction. Yes, it, it went down by 3%. Doesn't sound Reality bad. though, that's a 20% reduction in tax. Okay, in other words, if I have $10,000, right, and I get a, on, on taxes and I drop down, well, it wouldn't be that high, it'd be, let's say, around $8,000. So if I drop down, I just save $1,600 in taxes with that 3% drop from 15 to 12. Right. Okay, again, a 20% change in what I actually pay out on tax. So it's a pretty big deal, big, big uh, it impact. It's better as you get higher up in the tax code. Yeah, and this is the thing. You're talking about the, the as you go through the tax brackets, and each of those has been reduced, you're saving at each level mm -hmm. uh, of the, in those reductions as well. So it's, a, it's, again, it's a big tax break. And it, most of my clients, when we run their taxes, are seeing lower tax uh, lower taxes uh, this past year, and of course we'll see it this year as well. So there are still tax, seven uh, tax brackets. So when we're looking at the tax brackets, we have the 10% bracket. What before was 10, 15, 25, 28, 33, 35, and 39.6. So all of those have been reduced down. And then the other part is the brackets as far as how they've um, Spread, the uh, spread out the amount that, that qualifies to be in that bracket and the effect of that as well. Higher tax bracket, I don't know what this is about, but um, I've heard, you know, you hear in the news that higher uh, income earners benefit more, and the reality is the way yeah. the brackets work, they actually don't benefit as much, typically as lower middle class type. Uh, if you're making for a married couple, for instance, under 100,000, you're probably one of the bigger benefits. But even from 100 to say about uh, just under uh, two, you're still getting the most benefit. Those making in that 200,000 and above, less of a benefit there. And again, the new brackets now, we've got 10% still as our lowest bracket, then 12%, 22%, 24, 32, 35, and then now the highest bracket at 37. But you're talking about, um, you know, again, expanding out the amount that you're paying there. All right. Mm -hmm. One of the things you're going to want to pay attention to is with these new brackets yes. and with the standard deduction, the amount of withholding uh, from your checks. You may have noticed that your checks went up a little bit because they're not withholding as much tax. And Amazing this is an area you're, you know, you should see tax savings, but you might want to take another look at that. And I we're think gonna, with auto deposit, yeah. I honestly think people don't look at that right. as much, you know, and because I know when I sat down and actually physically showed people that, you know, your salary was basically the same, but you paid in $2,000 less in 18 than you did in 19. When they physically saw the number, they go, oh, yeah, but because the checks aren't hundreds of dollars difference, right. they really didn't notice. But if you actually take the time to look at your pay stubs, you will see that that is what's happening. So it does actually work really well. But the problem is if you have two jobs, sometimes mm -hmm. people are counting on that. You really do to make sure you've sat down. Uh, a lot of people may work a second job if they're, you know, whatever, and not having enough taxes still coming out. So yep. do do look into your W-4. This is, this is one of the things we're going to help you with a little bit. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about things you can do, right? It's, it's still just September. Yes. When it comes to tax withholding or setting aside additional monies for taxes, there's a couple of good strategies that can help you with that. Just to make sure if that's a big concern that you're going to have to write a check come April or that you're not getting enough withheld, we'll share with you how you can, uh, how you can take a look at that and how you can correct it now uh, before the end of the year. All right, but first to break, join us here. We'll be right right back on the retirement report.